Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube Middle Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Artisan Cutlery and Ray Laconico Centauri Front Flipper in VG10 Damascus. Very, very cool. Let me start off by saying this knife at the time of this recording, all right, the moment that this video was uploaded, this knife is not available. However, I'm still going to provide a link down in the description because it would kind of shock me if this knife didn't come back. So depending on when you're watching it, right, you can at least go check it out, take a look at it. It might be available, you know, check the link. It might be available. Um, but uh, anyways, this knife was sent to me by the Passeron Group, the Apex Passeron Group. Thank you so much. That means by extension, Artisan Cutlery. So thank you so much, Artisan Cutlery, for providing a sample for us. This knife comes in two different forms. It comes in the VG10 uh, Damascus, and then it also comes in a satin finish. I believe satin finish. It might be tumbled S35VN. So depending on what you want from your knife, they've got two different options there. Pretty great. You can use both. That's the nice thing. Uh, let's go ahead. Actually... Uh, also, quick thank you to my generous patrons uh, for supporting me right now. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, get your hands on some cool stickers and some other amazing benefits, uh, check out the link in the description. Your support would absolutely mean the world to me. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on the sky. This is definitely a full-size knife coming in at eight and a quarter inches. Is that right? Eight and a quarter inches overall. Blade length coming in at exactly three and a half. Cutting edge coming in at about 3.4. That is a sweet spot for me. Very happy with this. I like front flippers. I like full-size front flippers. Um, because there's more room, you know, if we're going to have an exposed frame lock, which is what this is, there's more room for me to adjust and position my hand in a way that's comfortable in order to engage that, uh, that front flipper. And this one, oh, great. Ray Laconico has some, uh, very easy to point out. I mean, like I, I'm, he's a designer that his designs you can pick out from a pile of knives. And I think that's good. Um, I think it's nice when a designer has like a certain style. Um, I'm always, uh, you know, looking for that fuller right down the blade. It's usually very simple, very straightforward lines, but in a very aesthetically pleasing way. And this is that, this is that knife. Um, he uh, is, is well known for doing some um, really amazing EDC sized knives. And so I think it's really nice to see something larger. <laughs> I like this size of knife a lot. And the fact that it comes in this form um, and is a front flipper just makes it extra super cool. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. The Rat 1's coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see they're definitely a uh, full-size knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2, again, coming in a little bit longer at about 8.3 inches overall, even though the, cam the camera's making it look a little shorter. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in a little shorter at uh, 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. How's the action in the sky? This knife runs on bearings, as do many of Artisan Cutlery's upper tier knives, and boy, is it smooth. Oh, the action, the breakaway of the detent, the weight and mass of the blade, right, the positioning of everything, and the fact that the inner surfaces are very smooth and it's running on bearings. God, this knife is fun to play with. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is a, I'm really getting into front flippers and I just love being surprised. I made this top five best front flipper video of all time. And I, number one, I screwed up by putting the feist in there because I forgot about the smoke. Then I handled a whole bunch of amazing front flippers that would have blown a couple of the items off the list. So just that video is there if you want to go watch it. It will be updated in about six months when I've handled a bunch more of the really popular stuff that's coming out. But guys, this thing is so well done. It's easy to engage the lock bar. You know, you do have to be a little bit careful on disengagement that you get your finger right there in that sharpening choil, because otherwise that very sharp blade is going to come down on your finger. But yeah, you can do this all day. Because of, you know, the height of this flipper tab, the fact that this area is all nicely knocked down here, right? And how much, you know, a lot of times it has to do with where you're pushing and where you're bracing with your index finger, and then where your thumb lands, and what the knuckle is going to slam into, right? The side of your thumb knuckle. All of that, just smooth and comfortable. No matter what, on a front flipper, you're gonna wear down your thumb a little bit. That's to be expected, but seriously, you know, you could sit on the couch and do this a hundred times before you get tired of that. It's fun, and at the same time, if you're really gonna take this out and use it, yeah, it's dependable because your, your hand is contacting a large part of the knife. 
you know, considering it is kind of awkward to engage a, a, um, a front flipper and at the same time, keep your fingers off the lock bar. There's just more room over here. So, you know, the pocket clip is kind of letting you know, hey, you know, this is about the area where the uh, frame lock is. So keep your fingers out of here. And it's just nice. I like it a lot. Let's go ahead and talk about carry profile or thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Ooh, nice and thin. I mean, you know, compared to the Para 3, we're looking at the same thickness. How about carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3 and PM2? Two knives that have unquestionably awkward carry profiles that nobody ever complains about. Yeah, this is a winner. It's a little bit longer than the Para 3, um, a little bit shorter than the PM2, nowhere near as tall, even considering it is a full-size knife with a full-size blade. Yeah, not a problem. We are looking at carbon fiber and titanium on this guy, and I don't believe... I don't believe there's any milling in there. Let's look. No, no milling in there. So solid carbon fiber on one side. There is, of course, a plate for the bearings to run on if you're worried. Uh, let's do, actually, let's do blade stock. Let's do a blade stock thickness first. So blade stock thickness on the Centauri coming in at, I don't believe we're super thick here, 120,000. So we're in Benchmade Griptilian territory, so that's nice. Uh, it is a long blade but not a, uh, you know, super thick blade. So 3.7 ounces, just over that ounce and inch mark. No problem. I got no problem with 3.7 ounces on an eight and a quarter inch knife. Absolutely not. This knife is not a delicate knife. It doesn't feel like a knife that's not capable, right? So if I can get a good profile and lightweight in a knife that feels like that, I'm really happy with it. Um, even in, you know, considering that it's not ultra thick, you know, if you got fitted pants, it's not going to be too bad. It's still a fairly big object, but the overall profile, right? There's no flipper tab, right? It's just kind of, it, it's, it's just not a cumbersome object for being a big knife, you know, a full size knife, I guess, right? You wear athletic shorts, skinny jeans, leather pants, right? This isn't going to be your thing. Or if you're used to carrying the Spyderco Para 3 uh, lightweight or bug out or mini bug out, right? But if you carry a normal size pocket knife, you know, or you carry, you know, a typical weight pocket knife, this is still under the four ounce mark. And it's very close to the whole ounce and inch thing. So you get to enjoy that full size knife, a knife that's comfortable in jeans, khakis, whatever. This isn't much of an office knife. It's more of an outdoor knife, right? Um, the the Damasteel, or I'm sorry, the Damascus version is more of a conversation piece, um, you know, type of knife, despite it, it, it still is definitely a performance oriented, you know, it's a VG10 based Damascus. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, this is going to be, uh, completely uh, comfortable in, in a lot of people's pockets for sure, unless you can't carry a knife out of this blade length. Let's go ahead and do the hardware check. We'll get out my handy dandy Wea bit selector and Wea magnetic driver, two items that are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them down in the Amazon store that I referenced at the beginning of every single video. Just pull open the store and look for knife maintenance. Uh, let's go ahead and check that pivot, which I am fairly certain is going to be T8. Yep. And I don't know if this is free spinning. Worst case scenario, you need two drivers. Um, Artisan Cutlery really likes those T6 screws. Um, I'd like to see Artisan, I, I know, watches my videos every now and then. So, um, and I, I, uh, it's probably up to, you know, the designer. The designer makes the request. Um, I would just really like to see a T8, but it's okay. T6 is just, it's not a deal breaker. It's just, you know, it's a problem with the fastener strip, right? Or the bit strips. Um, it just creates a problem. So there's, it's minimal hardware though. So I don't have that much of a problem with it. Just be really careful if you're going to disassemble it. Uh, two screws on the other side, T6 on the, um, uh, lock bar insert, which you shouldn't be messing with anyway, and probably another T6 on the inside holding in that um, pocket clip. The, the screw is hidden. Um, anyways, did we get through all that? Let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of this knife. So we are looking at a beautiful carbon fiber front scale. Very, very nice. Uh, really looks great. What is that little piece of debris? There's something stuck to it. Sorry about that. Um, the, uh, the edges here are all Fairly nicely knocked down. It's a little bit angular. I wouldn't call it sharp, but it's not that big of a deal. Truthfully, ergonomically, it's very comfortable. There's not a lot of um, suggestion on this knife as far as where you should be holding it, but this, this curvature, this inward curvature, really allows you to lock in in a way that you wouldn't expect for a knife that has no specific place for your hand. I also appreciate that because I'm free to move around a little bit. There's not really a guard, so you do have to be cognizant and make sure you don't run your hand up on the blade. Um, but you're going to lock in fairly well, and it is pretty comfortable. It's a little tiny bit angular. I'm not going to say that any specific spot on the knife is a, a, a hot spot. 
Um, but uh, if you're really going to use this knife hard, I'd recommend wearing gloves. But it is very comfortable, you know, in an EDC setting, if you're just going to get it out two or three times a day and make a simple cut, yeah, none of that's going to bother you. It's not angular uh, in that sense. Um, fit and finish on the scale and the placement of the uh, hardware and the setting of the hardware is just fine. Backspacer looks great. Pocket clip looks great. Um, really like the jimping. It is uh, not aggressive, but it's one that, you know, if you, if you engage that jimping, um, it certainly is going to create the traction that you want if you're going to bear down the knife, whether you're barehanded or wearing gloves. Uh, no excess sharpness up here on the spine, so that's nice. Man, that Damascus looks good. So this is VG10 Damascus, and I know everybody's like, oh, I want damascus steel. Uh, I mean, this is, you have to understand that this is Artisan Cutlery's higher you know, tier, but they're at the same time trying to make this affordable. If this was damascus steel, it, it probably would add excess cost to the knife, um, unwanted excess cost that might not make people interested in it. VG10 is, you know, VG10 based Damascus, as far as I understand, is going to exhibit a lot of the same qualities as VG10, which means, right, you still get okay edge retention, uh, decently tough considering it is stainless, but that's the thing. You get to enjoy that stainless quality while at the same time enjoying the aesthetic of this Damascus. So I don't have a problem with that. And you know what? If you do have a problem with it, don't worry because the other version of the knife comes in S35EN. I understand you can't get them right now, but that was that was an option in, originally. I don't have a problem with this uh, at this price point, and I think this looks excellent. It's just beautiful. They have the Artist and Cutlery logo right there, which almost disappears depending on the light. Um, I, I, on these um, Dam Damascus blades, I kind of don't want anything on there. <laughs> I kind of don't want the logo or anything on the knife. It's kind of weird to see a serial number printed on top of Damascus, and then it says Damascus on top of Damascus. Uh, <laughs> I know. I mean, like, people who buy it, I think, are going to know that it's Damascus, right? The other thing is that it also says China on there. Now, again, you know, I don't know the rules or how what Artisan Cutlery's rules are. I know that there are Chinese manufacturers who don't put China on there. Um, I don't mind the logo, um, like on a regular blade. I don't like to see it on, I don't like to see anything but the Damascus on a Damascus blade. I definitely don't like to see a serial number or, you know, that it just says Damascus, you know. I can understand like on a blade steel, it's just a satin finish, right? You got to print M390 or whatever because those steels all look the same, right? This is obviously Damascus, so it doesn't need to be on there. And I definitely don't like to see, whoops, bump the camera. I don't like to see China on there. But that's just a, um, that's an aesthetic nitpick. It has, has no bearing on function or anything like that. So I'll get off my soapbox and continue to talk about what I like about the blade, which is the shape. The cutting edge is very thin down here. It's nice. And it's got that uh, nice tip out the end, sort of drops down here. I kind of like, uh, you know, these styles of blades, in some cases, over a drop point. I like having a little bit more control on a cut like this, you know, on the tip uh, or, or near the edge. You know, I kind of like being able to do those draw cuts. You know, on a drop point blade, it's much more difficult to do a draw cut when you have an upward sweeping tip, right, uh, on that sort of kind of clip point blade on the uh, Spyderco PM2 or Para 3 or just a standard drop point like on the Ritter Ho, right? That upward curvature towards the tip makes some of those more utilitarian cuts a little bit more difficult. So in terms of EDC, uh, you know, overall versatility, the, the drop point might be better. But generally speaking, what you're going to use a knife for in terms of, you know, EDC tests or even just general, you know, going out and making cuts on wood or rope or whatever, cardboard, yeah, I really like that blade shape, and it looks nice. It looks really, really nice on this this blade all the way around. Um, the uh, the area here to engage the lock bar uh, is nice. There's a little bit of a cutout here. I would have liked to see a little bit more right here because as this thin lock bar, you know, wears over a little bit over time, it's going to become increasingly more difficult to engage. Um, so I would have liked to see just a little bit more right there just so I can get my finger in there. But uh, there is a nice little cutout on the lock bar itself so you can still engage it. And it's also cut a little bit on the carbon fiber. So that's nice. Not really that big of a deal. I love uh, the sort of Laconico fuller there. It's not like that's just his thing. I mean, there's other knife makers who do that, other knife designers who do that. But that's that's one of the elements that helps me pick uh, one of his knives out of a crowd. And, and uh, you know, I appreciate that. It's... um. During use, it's it's right in the spot, kind of where your fingers fall. So there's no real like traction or texturing uh, on this uh, on this uh, scale here. But 
that area right there is something that you can feel. And I don't know, maybe it's just like a feeling of security thing, but it makes me feel like I'm locking in uh, a little bit more on a, a scale that, um, or a handle that doesn't have like any specific lines to lock you in. So that's kind of nice. On the back here, I do very much appreciate, you know, uh, it says Ray Laconico back here. Um, you know, it's not that I want to see Ray Laconico and not Artisan Cutlery, um, but it, I feel like it's kind of redundant because, you know, the person who bought the knife, number one, knows it's Artisan Cutlery. And then number two, we've got it right here. And then number three, it says it right there on the backspacer. I think the backspacer could have just said R. Laconico and that's about it. But again, that's an aesthetic thing, right? It also could have said nothing. Um, but uh, that's just that's just me commenting on my feelings on that. As far as the fitment of the backspacer, it's perfect. It's very, very flush. It's functional. That's great. They've opted for the lanyard bar thing, which I think is just, that's what we should be doing. Stop putting the lanyard holes on the frame because depending on the design, it can force designers to, you know, feel like they have to include both the hole and the pocket clip. And then the pocket clip ends up in a weird position. This is how this should be. That, uh, that lanyard bar there is great because it allows them to prioritize the pocket clip. So what we have is a pocket clip that doesn't carry, you know, completely deep, but totally appropriate, not deep, not shallow, right? That's the amount of, uh, uh, clip that's going to be sticking out of your pocket, the amount of knife that's going to be sticking out of your pocket. The pocket clip has no sharp spots whatsoever. It is also contoured exactly like just there's ever so slight contouring on the scales, uh, the front scale and the uh, titanium frame. And that's nice. You know, holding this knife, there's no, you know, the pocket clip itself does not feel like a hotspot. It's just an object that's there that's just reminding, you know, there's the, the clip, but it's not, you know, it doesn't feel like something that would become a problem while cutting. And despite the scales being slightly angular, they are not uncomfortable in any way. Here's another thing that I really like, micro milling lines. I really like to see that. I'm, I get so bored of just seeing a plain bead blasted titanium frame. I love knowing that if I want to, you know, look close, I love knowing that there's just some, some uh, <coughs> micro texturing lines right there. It's just nice. And it kind of makes that buzzing noise when you run your finger over it. It's not enough texture to where it's going to create additional traction uh, on your hands, right? If you're using it left-handed or however you're holding the knife, right? Well, right, right-handed or left-handed, you're going to engage with it in some way. Um, but it's not enough texturing uh, to where you're going to gain excess traction. It's also not enough texturing where it's going to tear up your pants coming in and out of, out of the pocket. And by the way, this knife easily goes in and out of the pocket. No problem whatsoever. Very, very easy in and out of the pocket. But it's just nice to look at. I just like that. That's an extra step they took that I appreciate. Steel lock bar insert doubling as the over treble stop. That's wonderful. We have absolutely perfectly centering. And despite it being fairly thin for the size and being a front flipper, and it just, I don't know why I expected there to be a little bit of blade play, but there's not. It's solid. That's wonderful. There's no shouldering, there's no excess shouldering, but it doesn't necessarily need it. You know, the lock bar is going to decrease wear over time versus a standard carbonized titanium lock face anyway. So that's great. So little things that I can nitpick, boy, there's not a lot. Functionally, and as far as the overall execution of this knife, oh man, this is sound. Very sound. Again, I'd like to see, in, in terms of like little functional things, I'd like to see a little bit more of an area right here cut out so I can get, continuously engage that lock bar over time. Um, outside of that, I'd, I'd like to see T8, but that's not that, that big of a deal. Um, on the Damascus blade, I don't like to see anything. And uh, even on the satin finished blades, um, I don't like the serialization. You know, the, I mean, if you, I guess if you wanted to put the blade steel on there and the Artisan Cutlery logo, that's fine. I don't like to see China on there. I don't like to see, you know, even on knives that are made in the USA, I, I just, it's like, it's put the logo and the steel on there. If you got to put something on there and then that's, that's fine. Nothing else. I, I always prefer that it doesn't say anything. I like a sterile blade. I think it looks better. That's my own personal thing. Backspacer does not need to say Arla Conico and Artisan Cutlery. I mean, you know, again, we can see the logos on the blade um, and we bought it. Arla Conico could be there by, you know, by itself. It could also be up here. I mean, obviously, it's important to point out who designed the knife, right? It's also imp important to point out uh, somewhere who made it, who created it, right? You have to give credit. Um, obviously, I can understand why they want to put their names on. I just think it's a little bit in excess, and the placement of it is a little bit awkward. But it's none of that is a reason to not buy it. It's just me being nitpicky, and I want to I want to be honest with you guys and tell you what I think. 
Um, boy, outside of that, though, guys, this thing is a freaking winner. Oh, man. For a front flipper, I feel so confident with this thing in hand. I, a lot of times with a front flipper, I'm like, am I going to drop it? Uh, no, with this knife, I think I can pretty readily, you know, the idea with a good tool is always, can I remove it from the pocket and readily deploy it quickly and efficiently without having to think about it too much? You got to put a little bit of excess thought into a front flipper, especially if front flippers in general are new to you. But man, this design makes it easy. Uh, this was a good team up. Ray Laconico and Artisan Cutlery bringing a design like this and materials like this uh, at about the $200 price point. I think that's excellent. Whether you want the S35VN version or the, you know, S35VN is obviously going to be more performance oriented. But if you really, if you don't care about having, you know, the best edge retention of the two, right? VG10 is still plenty stainless. It's plenty tough. It's easy to sharpen. This is definitely, there's going to be a benefit in terms of ease of, you know, how, how easy it is to sharpen. Right, and if you really like how the Damascus looks, honestly, if it were me and I was buying this, I'd go with the Damascus one because Damascus is cool. <laughs> it's stainless Damascus. It looks great. It's beautiful. It's so well done. Um, I know you can't, you know, again, check the link because depending on when you're watching this, it might actually be available now. Um, but uh, if you're checking and it's not available, you know, I, you know that that stinks, right? I can still recommend it. If you can find this knife brand new for the $199 price, at that price point, yeah, definitely. It's worth that all day. Everything here is so excellent. I'm very, very happy with this. Artisan Cutlery continues. Artisan Cutlery and CJRB Cutlery continue to impress me every single time I handle a new model, right? There have been models that have, that have you know, interested me personally more or less, but this is definitely one of the coolest things to come out of Artisan Cutlery. Arguably, this is probably my favorite Artisan Cutlery piece that exists. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, this will be going on my most recommended knives playlist. I think that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video or at least found it mildly entertaining. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.